Hello folks, welcome to another video. This time I'm gonna continue on my topic around remote design sprint. Um, this is going to be about storyboarding. Now previously, we've done a video about storyboarding hacks for design sprints. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. I'll make sure I'll leave a, a link down below. But go and have a look at that first before you have a look at this. It will give you a lot of context and understanding on what we're doing here. Um, because on this one, I'm going to focus specifically for remote design sprints. So therefore, I won't cover every single thing out of it. I'll just quickly explain it. All right. Um, and by the way, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And also share this channel to your friends or share this video to someone who would benefit from it. Give us a like, a thumbs up, and also hit that notification button. Okay, guys, we're in the mural now. So. Um, as you can see, I've got the user test flow ready here. Um, again, if you don't know what this whole thing is all about, have a look at our previous video about storyboarding hacks. It'll give you an understanding of it. But the user test flow is generally just an easy way for us to understand the different steps and make sure that we cover the different steps that we want to storyboard. Your storyboard is your blueprint of a product before you get into prototyping. It's basically where you semi wireframe it um, when we do it face to face we do it in a version uh, in a form of a sketch uh, on a whiteboard but in a remote design sprint we do it differently and oftentimes this is something that people don't really know how to move ahead with so we'll show you how we do it uh, so once you've got the user test flow you understand that are there are six steps here uh, that you wanted to cover the other thing that we like to have handy during remote design sprints in our mural is a rudiment, a rudimental component library. It's not like your design system or anything like that, but these are components that we would have kind of like just did in mural using available icons and whatnot. So as you know, in mural, you could just search for icons, symbols, whatever. If you need a home button, you could just type home and then just grab something out of it, right? So design wise, it's not really you're not meant to design here, but you're meant to wireframe efficiently. And that's exactly our goal here is to wireframe efficiently, create storyboards. And um, if you've seen our previous video, again, we we do it in a form of a user interface flow. And that's exactly what I want to show you. So component libraries uh, quickly did it. Some of these I did as um, as I go while storyboarding and I'll show you how. But yeah, you get the idea some heading, subheading, H1s, H2s, paragraphs, uh, form fields, uh, check boxes, tick boxes, uh, carousels, perhaps a couple of buttons, some icons. Yeah, you get the gist of this. Um, now, I'm going to show you what I've done so far. And I did this in advance to not waste your time, but give you an idea of what it ends up being. And I've left a couple of um, extra steps or screens here for me to do right now as we go through this video. So the way it works is I would grab the six user test flow and just spread it out in the board. Uh, I'll start with create account, but similar to the user journey map, we have an end goal here, which is in this case to fulfill the order. So I've just dropped card number six, fulfill the order all the way down at the end. So this would have been somewhere there. Uh, so we're just trying to get from step one all the way to step six and trying to connect the dots. Those connections are these checkpoints that we have here. Number two, manage products, publish products, uh, receive order, manage order. So these, these cards here are checkpoints, as I said, um, to make sure that we head onto the right direction on the right track. Uh, so what we've done previously is just quickly wireframe you know, what a create account page may look like uh, between create account page and manage products. There are a couple of other essential steps that we thought was important for us to prototype. And so we've added business detail page, dashboards. Now all of this are using components that we would have done. You'll come across certain scenarios where you don't have the component yet. You haven't had it prepared that you have to do it. So you do it and then you just save it. Well, when I say save, it's not like saving it into the design system, but it's just copying it and dropping it into your components area. I'll show you how. All right. So hopefully you understand this where I'll just run past this real quick. Manage products. We've added another 
uh, interface between managed products and published products, which is adding product, um, a success state where product is published, and then ta-da, new product displayed. All right, so that's one thing covered. Uh, but in our user test flow, we, we wanted to test receiving an order too and managing an order all the way to fulfilling. So receiving order, we are going to prototype an order list page with different status. These are components. Um, and also manage order. So a manage order screen where you see all of the orders, you can check it all uh, or take some of it. And then once it's ready, you can hit order ready. And, and I'm gonna show you how I do this. So what I do is I just copy the frame that gives me a canvas to wireframe. Um, so this is going to be an order confirm. So after the screen, what's the next interface that you might see as a user? I'm just gonna cop copy some of these same components because I think we'll still have them. I'll still have that header going on. Oops, I missed the ellipses. Uh, I'll just copy the ellipses, this little icon here. Um, we've got the order still up there, uh, the order card. And then um, I'm just gonna grab a couple of details from let's say the customer. So I'll go to my component library and check out what can I use there. I'll probably think about a design where it's just uh, text. So it's just a confirmation page, confirming that this is the order that we're going to ship. All right, so we've got that. I'll change this to, oops. I'll change that to customer name. Come on. All right, name, full name. And then I'll change this to details, one, two, three, address, uh, suburb, comma, state, comma, country, right? And I might want to do a two column thing actually. Now this does not like truly matter for now because we're not really designing it in Figma, but hey, it's much better than not having things like this at all. And it gives clearer transparency and clarity when you're prototyping too. So imagine how easy prototyping will be on the next day if you have something like this. Um, contact number, perhaps phone, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a nice phone number. Don't try calling it, okay? Um, and maybe another field that I want to add is probably email address, email, uh, back at threads.com. All right. So we've got that. Uh, what else do we need to have in this order confirmation state? Uh, well, we'll probably need one of these call to actions. Confirm order, why do this thing keep popping up? All right, submit or confirm. Confirm. And oh, another thing is probably other than details, uh, delivery, estimated delivery. Estimated delivery, we could drop in uh, a date, perhaps, 24 December, Christmas night, Christmas Eve, 2021. Hopefully a better year. Um, delivery and I might want to drop in some notes too. I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but you get the idea of this. Um, I'm just gonna copy that lorem ipsum text. So it's always handy to have placeholders. 
uh, obviously with headings and things like that when you're storyboarding, my recommendation is to not use dummy text um, because it won't give you a good idea of what you're trying to do and oftentimes you'll forget. Uh, but for paragraphs, just content, just for, for you to fill in something, uh, you can use placeholder text. But for headings, subheadings, things that would give you information, uh, I would say uh, use the actual label for it. All right, let's just, let's just be happy with that, okay? Um, order confirm. So that's how I would do it. And then finally, fulfill order is probably an extra step. Uh, we've got one of those success dates that we had. So I might just copy one of these. Fulfill order. And really, that's where we're heading. This is our final step. And I'll just copy one of these components as well, which is a tick box, a tick graphic, a success graphic. Drop it in. Instead of new product added, I'll change that to uh, order confirm or order confirm or fulfillment order scheduled. It's probably the right way to put it. And what I want to do is I'll probably get rid of that separator over there. I'll drop in this order card. And um, I need a call to action, a button. I'll just copy that one. And go back to my store is probably where I want to go next. Anyway. I hope you get the idea of it, but that's how we would storyboard during a remote design sprint session. So what are the key points here from my point of view is preparation. Um, so you'll need to have obviously a clear enough user journey map. If you haven't seen our user journey map video, go and check it out. Um, that will allow us to understand what the user test flow is and a somewhat usable component library that you can do from anywhere. Feel free to use images or whatever. Um, we're planning to tidy this up and make it available for you. So make sure you follow us. Make sure you watch the rest of our other videos in the future as well, because we will drop this for you to download and use uh, and we'll share it with you. Hopefully that's useful. And um, but yeah, if you have any other questions around storyboarding or creating UI flows, uh, during a, des a design sprint or out of a design sprint, feel free to drop in some comments and I'll respond to you. And um, otherwise, share this to people that will benefit from it as well. And make sure you like and subscribe and let us know how we're going. Okay. All right. Thank you guys and have a good one.